So Netflix just blessed us with the first 12 episodes of JoJo Part 6 and I'm going to review every single one of them in the dankest way possible. Welcome to Dank Ranks, the tier list that provides no intrinsic value other than make you slowly die inside. It's JoJo time everybody, JoJo time! Welcome, welcome gamers. You know me, I couldn't resist it, another tier list video. So episode 1 starts off totally unrealistic, right? Jolene is in a jail cell and... <sighs> She does the usual, right? She gets my video the monitor, so I can tell you what she does. And then she gets embarrassed, right? The problem is, is not that she just jerks off in the jail cell. It's that she's a super badass later on, and she just gets embarrassed about it. A real man, a real Jotaro in this situation would just whip out his star platinum and slap the guard in her face. Uh, so this episode got me kind of confused. Sit here. Okay, hit me out. Episode 2. We, we're starting off better. Jolene gets transformed in, into Ratatouille because her, her roommate is a cunt, okay? We like that. We like Ratatouille. Ratatouille is a good show. But then she breaks the neck of Ratatouille. <laughs> I, I don't know why she does that to Ratatouille, this is despicable. By the way, she also gets her stand in this episode, her stand looks like a washing <laughs> yeah, machine boy. icon from the 80s. But her ability is kind of badass, not gonna lie. B tier. We get episode 3, here we see the, the general roots of the jail cell, right? No touching the bars because you can masturbate to them, yeah, that's illegal. Then she encounters a baseball boy. I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I still don't know why there's just a random baseball boy in a jail. It was sort of a, a setup episode for the next episode, so I ain't going to review that. So episode four happens, right? We have episode four. Jotaro gets introduced. He's the father of Jolene, epic reunion, except not because Jotaro is mad because Jolene demonetized my video by masturbating in the jail cell, which I totally get. Please demon don't demonetize this video, YouTube. I like, I'm a small YouTuber, I make minimum wage and I'm fucking poor. And after that, they get targeted by a sniper that has no eyesight, but has perfect aim. And you know what? I'm, I'm fucking disappointed. Like, why can't I, with two perfect working eyes, don't get a single fucking kill in Valorant, okay? And then, then it came to me, the fucking solution to my problem all along. Just carve out my eyes and get blind to do every single headshot. So thank you, Jojo, for taking care of my eyesight. A for almost platinum and veteran. Then we have episode 5. In episode 5 we get to see that everything that happened in episode 4 was just a dream. And Jotaro wakes up again. And then he wakes up in the reality. And he realizes he won the Kids' Choice Awards for Best Chinese Character. That's why there's slime all over it, you know, that sweet Nickelodeon slime. After seeing that, he gets turned into a disc somehow. Like, don't ask me, like, it's Jojo, come on, it's ridiculous. And episode 5 ends with uh, Jolene having the mission for the rest of the series to retrieve Jotaro's disc which contains his memory and his stance so uh, this was a pretty important episode as tier we also get to see the main threat of the series the, the stand at least we don't get to see the stand user yet we're at episode 6 already and here we get introduced to my, one of my favorite characters Hermes I love how Hermes when she gets her stand ability to confirm that it's actually reality she quotes Columbus and then she remembers Bugs Bunny's birthday. And no, I'm not making this shit up. Then she gets confronted by a suicidal janitor, which uh, he probably listens to my chemical romance way too much. And the stand ability of the janitor is when he gets killed, he can't kill Hermes as well. So Hermes does the only logical solution and kills him. Wait, what? B tier for best girl Hermes. Then episode 7 happens. Here we get to see Jolene and Hermes who get to, you know, be together again. And they have to rescue a tractor, because in the tires of the tractor there are discs. And there is probably the disc of Jotaro, that's why they have to rescue the disc. Then they get to the tires and uh, stuff happens. They get attacked by the usual enemy stands and they have to fight it, blah blah blah. And it sets up for episode 8. Uh, this episode, I don't know, it was a, a bit boring. I think episode 8 is way, way better because it's again a two-part arc E tier. We get to episode 8, right? Episode 8 is pretty interesting because in episode 8 we get to introduce to two very important characters, okay? We get introduced to the enemy stand which they defeat and then becomes the default me with green hair and also joins them. And we get introduced to the main villain who is... <sighs> Man, I get little at studio flashbacks, fuck. I, we get to see the main antagonist, he's a priest. Uh, I don't know why he's a priest, it probably gets explained later on in after 12 episodes. But yeah, that's the main antagonist. 
So, very important episodes. It's cool that we get to see the main antagonists. Uh, this time doesn't take 24 episodes to show itself. So, I really enjoyed this episode overall. I think it's a nastier episode. Then episode 9 happens. Episode 9 introduces us more to the personality and the goals of the main antagonist. And also how he eats cherries. I think that's a Kakuyan reference to demonstrate he's a Sigma male. But I really liked that scene. Then there's the standard Jojo stuff, right? We get to see an antagonist and they have an enemy stand. The first five minutes were pretty cool. But then the stuff was pretty like standard Jojo stuff. I think for a Jojo episode it could have been more unique. D tier. Okay. Then we have episode 10, right? Episode 10 is an interesting episode. There's a lot of wacky stuff and you know, I, I love wacky stuff in Jojo. That's why it's an S tier. Let me tell you why. So first off, Jolene gets dragged into a wall by the baseball kit. And then there's a failed furry cosplayer named Weather Report. And, and stay with me here. A guy that exactly looks like Diablo from part five, like no joke. <laughs> I actually thought it was Diablo from part 5, but he just kind of looks like him. We also learned that the baseball kid is a massive fan of trash days. That's the only explanation that I can think of why he has a fucking trash can in his fucking side pocket. Bruh. Um, then we get introduced more to the failed furry aka weather report and I don't know why but his stand I think is called weather forecast and he's called weather report. It's so fucking confusing and he tells us basically that he loves TV but he doesn't watch it which uh, totally makes sense. I, I mean, I also love The Rock and I'm not a geologist, right? Then he uses the stand to play a funny meme song on the piano. <laughs> then we see that they get, got followed by a guy that has a suit which covers his whole hair and also his eyes. Also, he's probably the biggest sneakerhead I know because he wears his sneaker without actually wearing them. I mean, look at this. I mean, I get that he doesn't want his red Supreme Jordans to get dirty, but at least wear them on your feet if you're wearing them. <laughs> then episode 11 happens. In this episode, they get trapped in a room with a zero gravity and Jolene really needs to take a piss. And this is probably the most awesome episode ever because we get to see the real side of weather forecast because he's a Sigma male because he tells her he already took a piss and it's floating over there, which is a super funny line. And I would have loved to just include that in the video, just just out of context, like my piss is flowing over there. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Uh, then there's this whole sequence where they explain how blood flows through the body. But what they forgot is that Jolene actually possesses those massive buns of hair which also is included in the silhouette and the blood just flows through her hair, which is totally ridiculous and doesn't work. Um, they defeat the enemy stands and everything is back to normal, except episode 12 happens, which is also a great episode. Not as great as episode 11 and 10, but we get to see more of the priest and the priest is a pretty interesting character. So let's put it in A tier and let me explain why. So this episode starts because Kermit had a bad day and fell from the house. I am going to Kermit suicide. And it starts raining frogs naturally. So, so the priest gets hit by the massive rain of frogs and is super desperate. That's, and I'm not kidding here when he finally starts to cool himself down by counting prime numbers. He probably solved some quadratic equation and trigonometry as well on the way. Then he gets upset that his Christian $800 Gucci pants got stained by Kermit suicide juice. <laughs> and he actually gets so upset that he randomly kicks a, that Kermit on the floor and, and probably castrates him in the process. So this was the last episode. L like they said, this has no conclusion because it's just a small part or uh, I think a third of uh, Jojo part six. And I hope we get to see the next episodes quite soon. Um, so this video will end here. If you liked it, subscribe. If you don't dislike it, kill me and send me to hell. And yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.